Welcome to another episode of the Presidential Executive. This your boy JB, the executive. My homie brethren over here, El Presidente Rag. And uh, we have a, a special guest in the building. And if, you, guest. if you look at the, the setup, special. you know, we, uh, we, we, we switched it up. Crack me and Crown Vic kind of switched it up. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a little different every now and again. But uh, to our left over here, we have... Um, a celebrity here with right. us, no, and but, but I internationally no. known. Yeah, right. But but I do want to say that you know I believe our platform kind of propelled him out there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you know he, was, he was on the first season, and we had a uh, pornography. Uh, and I think that's kind of what episode. gave people the wrong impression of him because of you know they they knew, they heard of his love of porn. What? They thought that he was going to be a lot more edgy than what he was. Why well, when he came on reality, yeah, TV, right? Yeah, no, 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 he no, wasn't no. anything like that. But and it's like, where's the porn guy? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Like, but, that, uh, that's, what they, that's what the people went to that car, but he wouldn't give it. Uh, 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 uh. But he was our first uh, unofficial, first unofficial first guest. Mm -hmm. uh, my homie, my brother, actually my my longest tenured friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For 35 plus years, 34 plus years, oh, something like that. <laughs> six years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, six years old. Yeah. My my homie and uh, ready to love alumni. Give it up for my homie, Cornelius Bryant. All right. Cone. No. Actor. Model. Yeah, I saw, I saw you had a, uh, he posted something. He was in the in the Boston airport. Oh, yeah. It's an uh, advertisement I did for the Williams, Visit Williamsburg uh, tourism site. Uh, actually, we did that in 20, end of 2020. Me and the girl did. And as people have been saying, hey, I seen you in, well, first we saw something in, in the uh, subway in New York. Uh, New York subway. Somebody was on the subway and was like, oh, I know her. And so somebody that knew the girl and she just tagged me in. And I was like, oh, we was in the New York subway. Okay, that's what's up. And then uh, actually Zadia, who was on the Ready to Love show with me, her sister was flying in Boston and took a picture. It's like, oh, Quinny is from your show. It's on this on this uh, wall in, in, in the Boston airport. And so she sent the, took the pictures to me. So I was like, oh, wow. So I didn't know telling where else it is. That's just the people that know me that actually took a picture of it. So it could be everywhere. Now, I do wonder, like, I don't know the the modeling game or anything like that, but if your stuff is posted on stuff like that, like mm -hmm. do you get any type of like royalty or any type of get back or anything like that? Um, you really some of so it just depends. I don't like, know what to call, but yeah, like uh, you're talking about like, well, sometimes stuff is perpetuity, which means like they own it, yeah. so you're not getting the extra money off top of that. But some stuff you do, you can in your contract, like say for instance. You do an ad or something or do a commercial and they run it for like a year or two you have a clause in your contract they try to show it and again that's year three then you're supposed to get an extra check from that so it's like a residual okay. after that but sometimes you have to catch them too because they may not tell you they're gonna run it again and yeah you catch me the way man they still showing this ad i did this ad three years ago they still showing it and you have to tell your agency so your agency can go after the client and be like, hey y'all need to go with some check because I see this on TV right now. So Trying it just depends. It's, it's definitely, uh, they definitely took advantage of the models. So it's definitely something you have to learn in the business. Mm -hmm. Oh, but before we go any further, JB, we What's forgot, up? you know, we got to let the people know what platforms are we on? Man, <laughs> look, we're on all podcast platforms, y'all. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. And uh, go ahead, while I'm on Nespia, go ahead and like and subscribe now. Uh, to the YouTube page and uh, hit the like button, hit share. the like button, share, do, do all the algorithm stuff. Um, and also, I want to to bring up too that you know I'm glad again. Well, actually, let me shout out Crown Vic, man. Crown Vic in the building, as, 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 as always. You know, we appreciate more than appreciate his help uh, doing this thing with that. You know what I'm saying, uh, my guy, and um, and Cornelius. Appreciate you coming through, bro. I know you in town. You know, you be skating in and out of town. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's most Memphis, people, Tennessee. Most people not even going to know you. You're going to be here mm -hmm. by the time you get out. Like so out here. by the time this come out in about a week, you know, he'll be long gone or whatever. Yeah. So uh, salute to my guy for uh, yeah, Arkansas. Man, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm from Arkansas. Oh, Lord. Here we Arkansas. go. Arkansas. He Arkansas done, born. He done started. He done, he done started. <laughs> Arkansas at this moment is still in the turn. 16. If they actually play Gonzaga. Yeah, they play Gonzaga on Thursday. We should, we should, we should, we should, we should Actually, I wanted, I wanted Memphis to win. 
So it could be Memphis and Arkansas in that Sweet 16. Yeah, I didn't want to. Like, back in, like, when Penny Hardway played back in, uh, what was that, 94, 93? Corey Beckham, yep. Yeah, it's Corey Billison. Yeah, Corey Beck, uh, Scotty Thurman. Thurman. Well, for Arkansas. Well, this, I, this Matter of fact, we had to play. Play. No, so, like, I remember Scotty that Thurman and uh, Scotty Thurman and Beck and uh, what's up? What Williamson. Uh, Dwayne, somebody. I can't remember the rest of the cast. Like, no, he was all too. Not all the points all it when they played versus Lorenzo. Mm-hmm. Like, the... Lorenzo Penny. Penny no, Penny, Penny was with him, too. Penny was no, on that team. No, Penny played. It was Todd Day. Todd Day was on that team. Lee Mayberry and Oliver Miller. No, Lee Mayberry, that's what I'm thinking. The point guard was Lee Mayberry. Todd Day was the shooting guard. Oliver Miller was the center. All three of them. But Penny was on the Sweet 16 team. Yes, but you got to remember that was 92. He went to... No, that's 93. No, it was not. No, no, 93 is when we got out early. Right, not the elite eighteen was ninety two, cause that's when I he took ninety three. Yo, I looked no, that up, man. No, I, I, I we, we can do that. Now we do facts. Now that was ninety three, cause no, ninety two though. Cause remember, cause remember we was watching it. Remember, it remember uh-huh. I called you. Uh-huh. I know Penny was playing with him. Right. I'm I'm about to I'm about to show you now. But the nineteen ninety two team was the the elite eighteen because the, the year Penny went in the draft, we didn't do that good in the tournament. So it was ninety four. Mm-hmm. No, Penny got drafted in 93. 94 was the year y'all won. But that was with Cole no, Williams. We, no. we, y'all won in 94. Yep. Well, we won in 93. No, y'all won in 94. 92, 93 is when yep. won 92, the championship. 92 is when we went to the Elite Eight. We lost to Cincinnati bad. Okay. At the, now, the next yeah, year. Yeah, it was Nick Van Exel. The, the Nick Van Exel that's us in in 93. Oh, sorry. Now, the next year in 93, we lost in the first round of Western Kentucky. Memphis, Memphis did. Memphis but I'm talking did. about Arkansas won that year though, right? In '93. Yeah, '92, '93. No, 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 no. That's Duke. Didn't Duke? No, Duke won '91, '92. I think. Yeah. So '90. Maybe I won '93. '93. Oh, North Carolina won. North Carolina beat Michigan. In '93. That was when Chris Webber called timeout. Sure. Was sure. it? No, was it? Yes, yeah, it was. Well, that we was won in that championship. Right? Y'all did. Y'all back to back. '94, '95. Y'all won in '94. Y'all had y'all won back to back. Y'all had. No, we didn't win that shit back to back. We went. We went back. Y'all went back to back to the championship. But y'all lost to UNLV. No, you you UCLA. UCLA. Yeah, no, nah, because UCLA won in '95. '95 with Ed O'Bannon and O'Bannon, right? Charles right, right. O'Bannon, Toby Bailey, yeah. and Tyus Edney. Charles oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but so Penny wasn't on that team that we no, played. Y'all? Penny was in the NBA. No, nah, Penny wasn't on that team, bro. Penny got drafted in '93. Right, that's so, what I'm saying. So that was and that was when Corliss Williams and I know Williams was for Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I remember was, that. That was Penny's rookie year. The rivalry okay. that we had with Memphis and Arkansas was was Todd Day and because uh, you know Todd Day went to Hamilton and he was actually okay. under Memphis, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I remember. You that. know remember that whole little deal. But yeah. oh yeah. Uh, so you got your boys uh, Arkansas coming in. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, you know, shout out to you know to him because he's he's a conflicted guy because he's <laughs> he a Tiger <laughs> fan and then he a Razorback. He kind of got a lot of qualities of a dead beat dead. Let me tell you what. Because, you know, he makes all of these Hollywood promises uh-uh, that never nah. comes through. No, nah, no, nah, don't, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You never know he's here when he's Don't do that. Don't do that. And then he's gone before you get time to, before you get a chance to spend time. No, nah, no. Nah, so if like as that. good of a guy as he is, he's got some dead beat qualities. <laughs> so you're saying he's like ghosts. Yeah. He's I mean, like, oh. actually, you know what? It was the 3rd of September, actually. And, and I'm going to tell you why I never forget the day. Because that was the day that my daddy died. What? Now, I was depending on my mama to tell me the truth. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever he, he laid his head was his home. Uh, uh, and we didn't die. <laughs> but I was, I was looking forward to that Memphis, Arkansas. Don't Me too, bro. Like, I, I really wanted us, you know what I'm saying? To, to put, We almost did. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think the refs did us in personally. But, you know, I don't want to get into that. I don't blame the refs. I don't want to get into that. Memphis is exactly what I thought they were. Uh, so, so, they, they, at least they pushed the, from the beginning. They pushed the number we one team to the break, though. We probably was going to win a game. We was going to get not to the Sweet 16. I said, we're a if Bates Round was healthy, maybe Sweet Sixteen. If Bates, I think if Bates was healthier and he was rolling, I think they would have definitely took. Man, it. if if was a fifth, we'd have. And I do want to <laughs> I, did, I did my research, Vic, and you know, on the executive mindset, I did say Memphis was still gonna make the turn. Yeah, I did. I, I might even put a little clip in there. Okay, you know what I'm saying? But executive mindset, because no, I remember on the, on the not board, saying that you didn't say it. 
what was they went on a nice run. They went on a nice run at the end of the year. You were beat Houston twice. I wish they'd beat him one more time, but they beat him twice. And you were talking about how he was disappointed and all of this, and and I kept saying, and I kept saying, I don't want to hear that. Keep that same energy when we make the tournament. If we make the tournament. I want you to keep that same energy when you like. Oh, he needs to do this. Like players got to show up and play. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can call whatever play I want. Like I can be like, "Hey, Vic, hand me this cord." If he hand me the lights off, it'd be like, "Oh, Shay, you need to do a better job of telling Vic to hand you the cord." No, I told him that he, all of y'all heard me say when hand me the cord. He gave me the lights off. Yeah, after he went off on a little, little, his little tangent, they they start they start kicking him out. No, I thought he was gonna fire him, but that's what they gonna fire no, Penny. <laughs> when you pick the yeah, groceries, Christina, when you the pick the groceries. You got you take all the blame for everything else. If yeah. you don't pick your groceries, you like, hey, I, I didn't pick this. It, these ain't my ingredients. Yeah. You got all your ingredients that you chose and that you hyping up that you in front of a magazine with. Nigga, go win. Well, yeah, but they they were hurt at that time, I guess. Whatever. I mean, on. like college basketball has become such a one and done thing. Like they yeah. don't know how to pick teams anymore. Mm. Everybody's going for you getting all these sexy picks. And like you see it in the NBA, you got Melo, you got LeBron, you got Dwight Howard, you got Westbrook, you got AD. On if it was a video game, you're not scoring. But th this is real life. You got egos and personalities you got to manage, and it's not working. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have to get the right combination of guys in any system. Yeah, that's true. To work, and so like you got to oh, I got three or four of these five star recruits. Okay, you really don't like. Like let's just be for real. Like when you look at like the fact we talking about the old school team like Arkansas, you had Big Nasty, mm -hmm. but who else was gonna really go? Who else was they talking about out their team was going pro? They nobody. That's it. They built that team around him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so now we got three or four guys, but like who's your go to guy mm -hmm. that you're building around? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we just get a bunch of dudes and we think like like look at the Grizzlies. You got Ja. And all these other pieces are building mm -hmm. around him. Mm -hmm. And that's why Memphis is scary and why they work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, like, when you get too many people, sometimes if it ain't, you know what I'm saying, them not gelling on the floor, yeah. the ego. I feel like, I feel like the, even the you mentioned, you mentioned the Lakers. I feel like they had their best combination when they had the the wife with Carrizo. With Carrizo mm -hmm. They had uh, KCP, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Kuzma. They had a lot of people who were just grinding, like Caruso. I, 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 they miss him, boy. That boy was a, he was a hustler. Defense, he played hustler. He, he was. He played defense. He was a hustler. I seen him play. He did. He played defense. I seen him play. He did for Chicago. He he made he blocked the thing. Then he came back and he got a fight on the other end. I'm like, yo, man, that boy was running up down that court. I was yeah, like, yeah, that's Russo. Russo is a hustler. Russo, nice man. <laughs> well, I do want to say this. You know what I'm saying? Salute to Penny. Salute. Also, seeds do matter. You know, I do. Yeah, want to say that would have helped him because. We're Memphis. We're. I seen we, you post something about that. If they've got like a fourth or fifth seed. They would have we been were, better. We earned the ninth seed because of how poorly we played. You know what I'm saying? Coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. So, but it ain't no way we should play a team to the caliber of Gonzaga the second game. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Like we should be playing them like where y'all playing them because y'all are four or five seed. Yeah, we're four or five. You know what I'm saying? Four, so, four seed. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. But, uh, we can be going. To, I, think, <laughs> I know. I, I, think, I think it's the cave vibe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to bring the sports and everything out of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We should have been recording a conversation me and Rag had before everything, everybody got here. You know what I'm saying? That would have really, you know what I'm saying? But maybe we can do that at some later time. But my boy is uh, here, and he had a, uh interesting experience with uh, Ready to Love. And before he even did this, she told me he was doing a show, and I didn't, I haven't heard of the show. But then I Googled it, mm -hmm. and man, it's like a huge follow. Like, yeah. you know, his, uh, Wifey was on it. You know, Zarena. <laughs> Was a first season watcher, oh, right. you know. What I'm saying, I'm like, what is this show? So I looked at, I was like, okay, this dude. Yeah, the awesome. women, the women be watching it. It's, it's surprising how many guys actually have watched it. Right. Yeah, no, I'm saying, I had never heard of it. Yeah, they yeah. say that I watch it with my girl, but they be watching it too. That right. be like, it be more dudes coming up to me than than it is. Women. Oh, where? Yo, yeah. <laughs> you watched it? Okay, I, I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was on. I just but, came to you, and I was like. Dude got a music for life. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I said, dude. I'm disappointed in you, Crown. It is pretty good, though, because I'm actually I'm watching this current season friend. now a little bit. Uh, you are watching current season? I am watching this current season a little bit. I'm, yeah. I'm maybe a season, uh, episode or two behind. But uh, so, but he's on this uh, Ready to Love show. And I, Peter, I'm like, this man on, on a real kind of reality, you know, type of show. And so um, mm -hmm. he did it. 
And uh, I think this is just my view on it. Um, I think they actually, you know, portrayed you pretty good. I don't think they kind of threw you under, you know, kind of to, you know, you the faith aspect was out there. And so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, I think they wanted to run with that narrative mm -hmm. and stuff. But mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, you what think saying? they gave him a good portrayal? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it was bad. Like. I think depending on your perception of it, like some people be like, "Oh, he's a pushover." Mm -hmm. Stuff people can say that, mm -hmm. but I know you, so right, it, was, right. it was maybe maybe that it was different for me because like I can see how people can see that. Yeah, but then I was like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. out of respect, I don't think it's bad. Career and in his future goals, I would reserve my thoughts on his portrayal for when the camera is not rolling Aww. because I just want to be so encouraging and loving. And I fear that my love and expressions of joy for his portrayal. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What? What? Who mean? are you? Who is just speaking like this? What? You. Oh, no. I'm going to say what I got to say. I'm just not going to do it on camera because this for him, though. Now, if he wasn't on here, that'd be something different. If it was but, just me and you, but he's on here. So, so, so you, you, you thought no. so you thought it was bad, basically. No, I'm just saying, like, how we, we, we were talking about this off camera. Mm -hmm. Like, think about it. When have you ever seen a movie, a TV show, reality or otherwise, where like, wh where is, and I use me as an example, like when have you ever seen a Christian portrayed in anything that was like me? That was like you? Yeah. I'm just saying that like, oh, he can be cool, he kick it, he, he is where he, he believes what he believes, his faith is his faith. Mm -hmm. He really does work his best to live it, but like, man, this is a cool... Like he can be around. He's not. I'm not gonna feel like, you know, I'm being condemned or every mm -hmm. five minutes he telling me I'm going to hell or he making me feel bad about the choices I'm making in life. Like when you are a Christian on any type of medium, you're the most disrespectful, judgmental, corniest, lamest, squarest, and and like you said, now they may not make him be a pushover, mm -hmm. but like on The Simpsons, Flanders ain't a pushover, but everybody makes fun of Flanders for being. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like I mean, and, and that's a perfect example. Look at Flanders; like that's that's the kind of quintessential thing that they make of. Yeah, but I, 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 I see, I see what you're saying. I don't man. think they made well. Well, you know more than me because you see all the mm -hmm. comments and stuff. But I don't mm -hmm. think people would make it fun of you because of your faith, or were they? Um, I think they were trying to not say necessarily for making fun of the faith part, but they were like trying to poke holes. Obviously, right? You know, you we put yourself out there as a Christian. Yeah. They look at everything you put out and like, okay, that's not that's not Christian like, or that you know. So now you get judge off everything that you do now you know what i'm saying because even like um you know i model right and that was something that i've always been a little bit conflicted about in some ways but some other ways like i work out so i'm gonna have my shirt off you know so they might say oh he always got his shirt off or you know and me and camille actually did a picture together and it was like oh they they naked they having sex especially if i'm talking about being celibate on the show whatever whatever they like oh they having sex you know talking about the picture y'all had with well just a, this couture yeah, yeah yeah uh and i I always shout out the photographer, shout out to Sashi, uh, the photographer that, that did the picture or whatever. She okay. did it, she did a beautiful job putting the pictures together. Um, but at the same time, you know, me, I'm used to taking pictures like that. But from the now when you get a bigger platform, it's like, okay, now you portray yourself as a Christian knight. You now, now it's like, oh, now, now now eyes are more on me. I was doing it before, but now eyes are more on me now. Now everybody's like scrutinizing me for it. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of flack for those pictures. Uh, off Instagram, and, and the only reason I said that is because if he had said he's an atheist, mm -hmm. ain't nobody gonna be like that part. Oh, you know, you're you're saying you believe that this is gonna happen. That's not very atheist like. You don't believe in anything, so now you're saying you have hope. Nobody does an atheist like that. exactly. Or if he was a, if he said that he practiced Islam, nobody would. Nobody's gonna like scrutinize that. me. Yeah, nobody right. would do him like that if he yeah, said. Yeah, that's true. Was, that's that's a good point. You say you're a Christian. And so it's not like, ooh, look at you, you're a Christian, but it's the slick undertone. And yeah. don't get me wrong, you and I both know it's some people who have perpetuated those negative stereotypes. But at the same time, y'all clown us, but that's y'all grandma. That's y'all aunties. That's your granddad. Y'all was raised like that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so now that, that you're not up under their rule of that household, now you try to make us feel bad. And that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel that now come like with uh well let's put it out there like at the end toward the end we saw well, at least i saw in the reunion that mm -hmm. you and you know commit y'all still together you and commit yeah we still together that's my girl so, like, hey, i saw you put i saw you did something for her birthday bro I was, oh yeah you know so i wanted to give you a shot I was like, <laughs> I was like, come on, he is in it bro like he really yeah. 
Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we had been through a lot, I think, with the show and everything. It was her birthday. Um, you know, I reached out to actually when we were friends on set when we had our friends date. Uh, her best friend was actually sitting on the, the left of me. Uh, uh, I asked her, was she doing anything? She said, oh, I asked her to do a happy hour. She wasn't really feeling it. Because she's really like to herself and doesn't want to have a lot of hoopla about it. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? It'd be cool. Because I actually was supposed to go to the comedy show that night. And I said, it'd be cool. I was already going on dinner anyway. I said, it'd be cool if I like, just invite a bunch of her friends, the people that was on the show with us that she's cool with. Because you, you ain't cool with everybody on the show. Right, right. <laughs> and then people that she knows previous of the show and just invite them out and have them waiting there for it and surprise them. I was like, okay, I think that'd be cool. And so I just like, okay, Puffin, I'm just going to do it. And um, her friend actually helped me out getting her, you know, her friends on there. And I knew already the ready love castmates. And so I said, okay, it'd be cool. I got everybody in the room and just surprise her walk, walk in. <laughs> Who was uh, filming it? Because I heard you like. Uh, Corey. You know, Corey. He's a film guy. He's always doing production and whatever. So he had a camera behind me. Hmm. And then he had a camera in front of us. So he had like little phone set up and everything. So he's really good about production. We actually working on some stuff together too, trying to. Dope. You know, some stuff after this. Good to hear. Now, mm -hmm. when you're in the city, you need to use crown. What's that? Just saying. Shameless plug. Now, saying when you're in the city, you need to use crown. Oh. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah, crown. <laughs> Not there, like crown does like everything, like, you know. It's hard to get him in here sometimes because he's. I know he's like we're gonna meet at nine thirty. I was like nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he really when he told me why he did not control. Yeah, he, it. it was over. I, I yeah. wasn't even here. But uh, <laughs> but your experience though, t tell us about your experience on uh, the Ready to Love, kind of from how you got the opportunity mm -hmm. to when you when everything started shooting. Yeah, so um, I think it's one of those things where curiosity kills the cat. <laughs> Um, you know, I, uh, I've always been interested because so, so, you know, being the acting, the acting is always what I wanted to do. And then of course I modeled, but I had a cast agency that reached out to me after I did the for my man episode and they were casting for, uh, the bachelor. I think it was the bachelorette when the Rachel was going to be on the black, the black first black woman on, on the bachelorette. And so she was casting. She was like, Oh, I think this guy would be good for whatever she submitted me for it. And I think that's what kind of got me in connection with some of these people who cast for these different types of shows, reality TV, TV shows. And so it kind of got my interest. Like, oh, okay, I wonder what it would be like to be on a dating show or any type of reality show mm -hmm. uh, like this. And so Bachelorette was the first one that I applied for. Um, and then um, I think I talked to her again. She had tried to put me in for like, uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, Gangsta, well, it was a thing called Gangsta Love. We used to like pilot for Shook Knight. Gangster? It, was, it, was, it, it wasn't on TV. It was uh, a pilot for it. But. Shook Knight's daughter, uh, Arian Knight. You probably okay. never heard of her. Yeah, yeah, uh, Shook, have, yeah, yeah. You heard of Arian Knight? Yeah. So uh, Shook Knight's daughter, so they wanted to create a show behind her dating and create called The Gangsta Love because of her dad. Uh, yeah. And so I helped out with the pilot for that. Uh, also was in the running for Temptation Island. So I was in running for a couple shows. Right. And then, so I had already a connection with a casting agency that was filming for these type of shows. So uh, she put out that Ready Love was coming to DC. And I was like, I saw it. I actually never watched the show before mm. applying. Um, and I saw the ad for it. And at first I didn't apply. Then one of my other homeboys hit me up and said he was applying. And I said, you know what? I already tried to apply for three or four different shows before. It didn't work out. And then when he told me he applied, and then I heard um, the lady that I worked with before call him. I said, oh, she's casting. Okay, let me call her up. And I ended up calling her up. And then I told her I applied. And next thing you know, a week later, I get a call from LA. <laughs> So they called me up and I had a couple interviews after that. Um, didn't really take it seriously yet until I did that final interview. And then after I did that final interview, I could see how they were looking at me. And I had that country boy, Southern gentleman, especially being in D.C. That's not something they typically would get. It's especially a good faith based country boy. Uh, got a good look, got a good job. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, OK. And I started really looking at myself. Okay, you know, I think they might put me on this. And then like probably like a week after that, they uh, told me, say, hey, you're like, on a short list right now and so they kept calling me every week i said they, i'm probably gonna be i told my parents uh right before they i actually got the call from own it was like yeah you're gonna probably be i'm probably gonna be on the be on this show <laughs> you know what i mean it was like and my dad was always like my dad seen a little bit of the show and he didn't like it honestly because he he felt like if you like somebody early on and you might just like that one person you get voted off because you have to have a collection of people that like you versus one because you know it's a collective vote Yep. And my mom was like, she wanted me to do it. My dad was kind of like on the, on the fence uh, or whatever. But uh, That's your mind, though, man. Your mom, huh? 
Your mama does. She does. My mama does. She's yeah, like, just, your get, mama just, just get on. Just be on TV, baby. Yeah. Just go on. Get on out there. Your mama just always been like the wild card. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? Get on out there, baby. Yeah. Get on out there. But um, once you know, of course, you're exciting. When, it's exciting once you get on there and 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 it's gonna be on. It's like okay, we're on the dating show. You seen commercials about it? I'm actually watching the last season, which was in Houston. As I'm applying, I honestly didn't know it was that big. Kick it 100. I thought it was like maybe. I know I thought it was always on. You know, I heard about it a little bit. Like, I knew nephew Tommy was on there. I knew he was. Um, you know, you know Steve Harvey morning show. I, I heard him every morning talking about that. And um, I was like, okay, it, it, it might be a few comments on there, a few people watching it. You know, not that many, but a few people. You know, I might get a few comments on mine. That's it. And so I'm not thinking that big big thing about it. And um, once we film it. Um, and then after we got done filming, a friend of mine hit me up. She was like, you know, they got like a whole Facebook page for this show. And I was like, they do. She was like, yeah. And I looked at things like 30,000 people in this Facebook group. And that's all they talk about is this show. Hold on. So let me stop real quick. So, mm -hmm. this, so this is good to hear because this is your mindset going in. Yeah. That you're thinking that, okay, this is not going to be such a big deal. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But even though it's on own, it's on own, but. When, you know as, what own is? I like, know, I know, I, but I, but it's what I'm saying, just like how you said you ain't watched the show previously. No, nah, I, I didn't either. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? And so until I started applying, I was catching up watching like the last season because it's a weird show to kind of catch like the last seasons of. Like you have to like catch it while it's on, and right. it's like hard to go find the episodes. It's not like on YouTube, whatever. So it was like I couldn't really find the previous episodes, and um, and so I'm watching it. And that last season, which was the Houston series, and when they had Liz on there. It was boring, like honestly, and it was a good boring. It was like it wasn't no drama. It was just like there's, you got these black conservatives that got good jobs that's dating out here, and there's just dating multiple people at the same time, you know, whatever. But it's no mess at the same time. Everybody's respectful. The men are respectful of each other. And every time he makes sure, it seems like he's keeping a check on all the men. It's like, hey, be respectful of the, of the, of the ladies. You know, saying same thing to the ladies. Be respectful to the ladies. Be respectful of these men. We're gonna be respectful. He was very like. A certain, uh, how do I say, a certain standard was there to me. It wasn't, no, you know, I mean, gonna be being no love hip hop is what I'm, you know. And so I was thinking like that. I was like, okay, I can do this. This, this is gonna be, and they may get me in a room with some ladies that I may not have met otherwise. Right. And so that's what I'm thinking going into it. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking going into it. So, <laughs> I want to know, you, about, uh, you, you, you audition for Temptation Island. I want to know, <laughs> are you still in touch with those people? And if so, what would one be to get <laughs> on that show? Like, oh, they, 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 well, that type of show. You trying to get messy Make over here, right? Yes. So I that, mean, I'm just this. This is what the people want to know, JP. So on that type of show, what the people want to know. I got to give the people what they want. So like, on that road. on that type of show, though. So it's different, right? So it's like Temptation Islands where you're breaking up couples that are established, either like more so they're not married, but. Couples that are, I never watched the show, but this what, is what, what I've heard of the show. I think it's on like ABC or something. Yeah, it's like one of the ABC or Fox or something. Yeah, but like you're like so in you're a, basically like a middle relationship. I would have came on. I would have came on if they would have brought me on. I would have been a single coming in yeah, to break up. Show. Yeah, to break up a, a, a established couple, pretty much. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's rewind for me. Rewind mm -hmm. because I'm I'm not familiar with Temptation Island. No, yeah. I didn't even know he did when he said it. But like, you, like, but what? you know about Temptation well, yeah, Island. No, I, I do, but I'm just saying when he said he auditioned for it, I'm tripping. I'm like, okay. So you was finna be breaking up, like, cause I could see. That's what that's what they were so trying like, to. You could be that southern gentleman. I'm the gardener. You know, <laughs> oh, oh. That sounds like a porn, man. No, oh, no. Did y'all ever watch? Uh, you remember? You know who Lil Red is, right? Yeah. Did you yeah, ever watch yeah. his show? Yeah. So you remember the with premise Jesse, is that? Jesse, with Jesse on? Yeah, yeah. You okay. The premise of the show is that his wife, uh, his wife cheated on him with his barber. What? I, I got to find some. You remember the bar? And the barber was just like, the only reason she messed with me is because. You wasn't listening to her and everything, and I was just a uh, listening okay. ear in the front. Uh, so he could have uh, been like the barber. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he could have been the listening. So ear. Temptation Island is a reality show. It's a yeah. reality show. Too. Yeah, that you basically going in to break up. That's that's what the premise would have been to break up like a, a for real established couple. That's what they said it would have been. Like, I mean, that's what I never. And I didn't. I did not be for real. Is to see how strong your relationship is, something like that. Yeah, but to me, uh, if, in, in that situation, I would have gone in as an actor, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't as an actor, as a, more of like an actor. Like I would have gone on as a personality in a sense. As to, I was thinking like more to, so. to to do whatever they tell you to do, basically. Like yeah, like, like okay, I want you to go break this here and take up. your shirt off and <laughs> yeah, break this up. On, go put some suntan lotion on. The yeah, you know they would have like probably that. producers probably probably would have did okay, some stuff. Okay. I'm glad I didn't get on there. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I had to stop watching that. Like, I'm like, but no, it's not like it's, it's, it's not working. But right, it's not, it's not like yeah, but it's it's not like just like, oh, 
let me walk around with jogging pants and no drawers doing jumping jacks. It's not like that. It's like you're in situations where you have to interact with people. Mm-hmm. And so now this this third wheel or whatever is kind of like flirting or, you know what I'm saying, trying to see, shooting, shooting some hints out. And then mm-hmm. like, so now if you look a little bit too hard, Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm straight. As long as making good don't show up, I'm straight. Ah. You know what I'm saying? Making good, like, and, but that's in my contract. Like you talking about your contract, that's right off. Yeah. But but I'm just saying when he said he was wow. on that show, mm-hmm. like what, what he auditioned, auditioned for. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. But then I also wanted to know too if you were still in contact with see if you just, uh, just actually, some I, of our listeners wanted well, to well actually the same actually yeah. that's what I was saying that the same lady that casted me or helped me cast for me for the ready love the same person that was that helped me at least at least uh, connected me up to the people because she has connections with LA and all that. Hmm. So she connected me up. So she's the she's the she's the plug. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh-huh. that's interesting. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to yeah. peep it out now. Like I you yeah. know sound like a drama show. So I yeah. I came front like now. Yeah, it's you know, I, I, I would be in your autobiography. Like this TV. Temptation. <laughs> but uh, okay, so now you you go through the process and mm-hmm. now you're casted, mm-hmm. and so now you go and they're shooting, mm-hmm. and the first couple. How were the first couple of days? Is it kind of how you thought it was, or did it start off like, oh, this is not kind of what I expected? Or um, going into the house, um, I think. Um, I guess you realize how 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 long you film <laughs> versus how much they actually show on TV. You know what I mean? Um, but you film. We filmed all day. I remember uh, getting there on. Um, I think we filmed it on a Saturday. I got there at eleven o'clock. They had to sit in our cars for like hours, just waiting, just to even go into. Because they basically wanted to bring us everybody in one at a time. They didn't want nobody to see each other, even the guys. Like a matter of fact, Frank, that's on the show. He's the first guy that I saw, but they was like telling us to break up and go get in our cars because they don't want any other guys to size each other up either. You know what I mean? So right. they wanted everybody to come in the house organically and meet not only the, the ladies, but the guys too, and see everybody walk in the door one by one. Um, so walking in, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm nervous, first of all, because I'm thinking like they about to have the cream de la creme of DC right. up in here. So I don't know if I'm going to make it past the first day. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what, you know, you have that anxiety built up. Right. Where you don't know. I know I'm I'm okay looking, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know who, Come on, who I don't know you who types of breath. I don't know who coming in the door. <laughs> I know I'm confident, but I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know who coming in the door. They might have millions of dollars. I don't know. I'm just you know, but um um but yeah, it was it was I think I became once I got in there, everybody came in the house. Um, I became more relaxed because I feel like, okay, these are regular people. Everybody just regular and just and there's actually a few people that I actually seen before. Yeah. Um um Sabrina, I actually seen her around. She actually was in, engaged to a designer I used to model for. And then Walter, we were Capital Brothers. We actually was on a ski trip like a year before that. So I've seen a few That's people. the older guy with the beard. Right? Yeah, yeah, Walter. And so um, so I kind of seen a few people around before, but the rest of everybody else was pretty much brand new. People think me and Camille knew each other before. The, we, we connected so fast, people think we knew each other before the show. We actually, when they saw us sitting on the couch in that scene, that's the first time we met, you know what I mean? And... Uh, I was actually happy that she walked in because I was like, you really don't know going into a process like that if you're going to be even attracted to anybody. You know, you think you're going to walk in and you're like, oh, man, I might be acting for real because I don't like nobody. But, you know, seeing somebody that you uh, organically, you know, like, oh, she, she fine. You know, let me go. Let me go all in for real. You know what I mean? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did we chocolate came in? I was like, OK. Yeah. Now, I saw you oh, first. Yeah. It was Courtney that you was uh, in there a day. Uh, uh, I think the first thing they showed me was, was Camille. I, was a, the first girl they had me talking to was Camille. Well, they showed on camera anyway. Okay. okay. Actually, Sabrina is the first lady that I actually talked to in real life there. Um, and then um, um, and then as soon as I left, I think her, I think I talked to Liva. They showed me talk to her a little bit. I talked to Liva. And then um, and then I finally got Camille. And then me and Camille talked probably for at least an hour or two after that. So, so now you're going through the whole thing. And so now you're... I saw the reunion. The reunion mm-hmm. was, you know, kind of buck a little bit. You know, <laughs> it was buck your name, real yeah, life. Yeah, y'all had a little something. <laughs> but I saw you had your uh your coming to America outfit on. Uh, <laughs> that's like uh, Joe fit. They, 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 they dogged me out on, on Instagram for that. They said I had the uh, Gorn Contrail, the finished product of yes, Gorn Contrail from the Cosby show. They said, what's the Denise? 
<laughs> it's like, what's that? The Denise, that's the that's finished product with Denise made off the uh, off the Cosby show. It was, it was fun, dude. I this love. It's not a Gordon Gar trail, <laughs> dude. That, hey, that, that, that you that's say that. that's too that's too fire to me. That's too fire, yo. It was so it was cold. Was so 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 I had the in the evening joint because I wanted it to be different. And then I had the, you know, thing on the side. And then I always caught the grill in my mouth. I saw, I saw the grill. <laughs> had the bottoms in. I saw the bottoms. And then I saw your lady was matching. With yeah, she had, she had some bottoms, too. She had some uh, bottoms. I didn't see the bottoms. She, she had some grill. Well, hers had the, um, she had the fangs gold. And then she had the bar on the top. Okay. So she had the rich cut bar on the top. But the mines were just straight, just cost eight, just the full, full gold. But hers had, she had just the bar. So hers probably more subtle. Now, yeah. <laughs> Now, six, six. <laughs> it's, like, it's so funny. It's so funny. My little brother, my little brother was proud though. My little brother, my, my little brother, my little brother, my little brother was proud. <laughs> he was like, he's like, hey, dog, why you get the whole? Where you get the whole bottom? I got, I just got the eight. He said, you should have got the whole bottom. I was like, you know, I got to represent. Shout out to my guy, Cleo. Yeah, salute to my guys. My little brother, man, that's my dude right there. Uh, so after y'all got done with the show, now tell me. You went through the spill before the casting and how your perception of it watching mm -hmm. the previous season in Houston. Mm -hmm. Now you finished with it. You, you got your lady. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? For that now, what you think? Would you do it again? Would I do the show again? No. I, what, any reality show. Like, not Hell that. Hell no. You would do that show again. I mean, Hell no. no. You would do it again because no, that's wouldn't. how you got your lady. Well, I'm saying, no, I'm, what I'm saying is I would have to admit her some other type no, of way. No, so I'm just saying, but could <laughs> it be maybe that if you don't do that show, I, you know what I'm saying? He, like, maybe the whole purpose of you doing this show was to get that. Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, that's true. You never you never know what path. You never know what path you go down. That is true. But at the same time, I don't know. It was it was rough. It was a rough path. I'll, I'll get I'll hold you. about this off camera. Like, what 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 are some things maybe that when you went back and watched it mm -hmm. that if somebody didn't know that were taken out of context? Um, so I would say that um so going in, probably the first three or four episodes, you know, that was it pretty much was a good depiction of what it was. They took some pieces here and there and kind of made it to what they wanted to make it as far as narrative. Um, I know that I talked about, you know, not then I didn't have sex before, but in that time period, but going before going on the show, I had stopped. I didn't do anything. Matter of fact, I didn't even date anybody before getting, getting on the show because I just came out of a relationship and I wanted to, you know, fully like chill out for a while and get to actually i wanted i got back into the church that's probably why i went on to the show so strong with the faith because i really just became a member of a church that year <coughs> and was working in church and was like fully into it at that point so when i went to the show that was right there in the front of my mind talking about faith and so um so like as soon as i started taking that's what i talked about so when i went through the process it's like when i started talking about it it's like you got to keep talking about it you can't like just stop you know what i mean so you got to keep with that same narrative mm -hmm. and uh any woman that i dated you know um they wanted to make sure that i brought up certain things in that along that same type of storyline um uh with camille uh me, you know meeting her because she came on she has a drama background she tv person now you know she she's done a little <laughs> bit of stuff before yeah. um she was a little extra and they threw lighter fluid on that you know what i mean so if she made a face she made you know a little doing little stuff whatever they you know they may film it for three or four hours but they may only show that piece and then they'll put it to somebody else's face she might not even be making a face to what this other girl said but they'll make it like that's who she's making a face too so that's where you kind of throw lighter fluid on it now, even when we did the um, the the pool party situation, where you know she's like, people feel like she cussing me out. <laughs> yeah. She calling me crushy bumpkin and all these smile, all these girl faces, whatever, whatever. Even after that, I got into her because I knew I was like, look, if I don't get into your tail right after this, it's gonna look crazy. But they didn't show it because they like, oh, I'm gonna keep this guy in a certain nice guy. Because I probably, could, I, don't, I don't think I don't think I cussed, but I probably almost did when I, when I was talking to her on camera. So they probably was like, oh, he's gonna look mean on camera. Yeah, you cuss. I probably I could have looked. I don't know. <laughs> so basically, but you did respond. I did respond to it. It wasn't shown. They didn't just, show. So it just looked like you got towed up and you yeah. sitting over in the corner. Yeah, I'm sitting on the corner looking, looking crazy. Right, right, right. Because in that moment, I'm like, okay, let me let her have her moment. But then I'm sitting thinking at the same time, like, what can I say? You know, and then uh, then she started crying. I was like, all right, all right. When we got downstairs, I went in too. I was like, dude, like, you just embarrassed me on national TV pretty much. You know they're going to show that. Like, you know, they show certain things. 
that such a dramatic moment in that in that time period, I know they're gonna show it because the producers was laughing <laughs> with me behind the they not with me, but they was laughing at me at behind the cameras once the cameras cut off. They was like, I was like, I was getting pissed off because they was laughing. I was did like, dude, go, this is people's real life. Like, why are y'all laughing? Did you go into too short mode? Like, did you? <laughs> yeah. I went into like, I, I went, I went into, the, I went into that that uh, as soon as we got down to that second scene, they only showed a brief part of it where we was like kind of dancing, like it was like a little part after the pool party. I grabbed her and was like, uh, uh-uh, come over here, and I, you know, we all mic'd up. So as soon as we get over there, sit on that couch, I'm going in on it. And I'm going in on enough so a camera can come over there. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to say some good stuff My, for a camera to I, get in front of you to get it and catch it. And I think it was two cameras over there at first, and then one camera stayed or whatever. And I was like, man, I was going in to the point where she was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, she, she, I, I, went, I, I was going into it so hard. Right. I was like, okay, they're going to show that it's going to be all right. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so when you, so when all that got finished, so what, what didn't you like about it to where you wouldn't necessarily go on another reality show again? Um, just because, like, you know, like I said, how they portray a certain narrative. And I know, and like I said, in the contracts, uh, they put in there that they can create and change the storyline, you know, depending on the, for TV purposes. They put it in the contract. I saw it. And that's why I was so adamant about portraying, like, make sure that I'm very conscious about everything I say. I didn't want to talk about nobody. I didn't want to, like, go in on nobody else. You know, be bashful. Not, I wanted to be respectful and talk right. And even like they'll lead you in questions too. Like they'll ask me, "Oh, don't you think Camille is controlling? Don't you think she's possessive?" They 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 would say that, and I'm like, "No, mm-mm, no, no." And I would never say anything they wanted me to say. Right. So what they end up doing was they end up piecing it together. So when I am talking bad about her, of course, after the food party, of course, I'm be like, "You know what? That I didn't like that. I didn't whatever, whatever. I didn't like this. I didn't like that." And I'm going in on a little bit, but not like hard, but just saying. I'm disappointed this happened, whatever. They're taking that. They're not showing it in the content of when it happened. They're, they're taking it and they're, they're spanning it across a couple of episodes. So what they're doing is, the reason why I can give people somewhat evidence of this, when we do certain scenes, we wear certain shirts. Like if I'm wearing a shirt, this shirt right here, this Razorback shirt, whatever. I'm recording episodes two and three. But then I may wear a Memphis shirt. I'm recording episodes seven and eight. If I'm wearing, a, uh, well, and that's why we couldn't wear logos. We're wearing just like regular, I mean, I'm wearing a blue shirt. I might wear a green shirt. When they're showing two different colors or two different shirts in one scene, like if I'm doing, like you see the scene right. playing out and you see me in interviews doing, you see two different colors, then they put, the, they put they piece that together to fit a certain narrative. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm saying something bad about me, like even the table scene, they got me saying, oh, I'm very disappointed in her. I said that at the pool party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't say that at that time. You know what I'm saying? So they, and I was, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. Now I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. I, you know, people who behind the scenes know. Right. But, People in the audience, they just thinking it's seamless. Oh, snap. Disappointed, son. <laughs> yeah, they, it's just seamless. And the way they piece it go together. Off again on that nigga again. Yeah, they have, they have seamless editors that put these pieces together. Right. And they listen to everything and they put it together. And there's even one point where, like, uh, he asked me, is she controlling? I laughed. I said, oh, you're trying to get me in trouble. Because I knew they was trying to do it. They actually showed that to make it seem like I'm avoiding the question. When I know they're just trying to play me to say a certain thing. You know what I mean? So they get real trickster. And then, you know when they do these when they do these productions. Now I commented because uh, I told you I was like, you was on one of the guys with the TSU podcast or something like that. Uh, uh, Troy, yeah, Troy, yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and Rag, I, I texted him. I saw him like said, nigga, if you want another podcast, you don't come over here, dog. We gonna have a problem. Yeah, he takes me. Back. I can't, exactly that. That's why I'm on cover of. I was like, nigga. Well, like, yeah, you saw me on the, the Christian Joy Friday. Like, you saw me. I'm saying because I found him on the gram, and I'm like, so like I'm steady seeing like, oh, okay, this is enough. Oh, that's another one. Yeah, like, yeah. Because it was one of them, him and uh, Camille, Camille did. Yeah. Well, I really both that was the one. one with J- and J- then he had one where he was by himself. Like, I'm like, well, I really didn't do that many interviews. You did. I only did three, technically three interviews. I did the one with Rashida Simone. That was the first interview that I did. Um, that was John own one. No, no, no. They, I didn't do any with him own. They they shut me out. Um, the guy. Yeah, they shut me out. Matter of fact, the reason why I know that is because another known podcaster that does YouTube videos, Little Black Book, um, he told me that they were shutting. They were, they were telling him not to en- engage. And me, Camille, Zadia, Nye, and Shiloh, they told him, that's, they, and they told him that they, if he interviewed us, they would engage. Whatever they, they threatened him pretty much in a way. Um, that's the reason why he really know that they were shutting. And I tried to do a Chris. Uh, uh, I don't know if you heard of Rolling Out. I tried to do an interview with her. 
She said yes, but then she came back and tried to get approved when she said, oh, they won't let me do it. You know what I'm saying? So now yeah. th- this this actually I commented on that podcast you did with Joshua, Joshua Dillard. Joshua Dillard. Uh-huh. And, and my thing was was that I knew this, like when you were going in, when you told me you was going on on a reality TV show, I was like, you know what I'm saying? It's basically what you get in return is, you know what I'm saying, fame kind of new celebrity you can kind of flip it into whatever you kind of want to do now yeah. on, on their side they can use your name image and likeness yeah. for whatever they whatever want to they do want. Yeah. you know what i'm saying but yeah. you can capitalize on that to yeah. where because i was like that's why i'm like bro like be careful you know going on and talking about this stuff because just like you said they're kind of shutting you out because mm-hmm. you kind of you may be kind of looking at you know down in a brand a little bit you know what I'm saying? I don't want you to be in that light. I'm like, dog, I'm telling you, like, go flip this, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make this make this to your advantage. Like, you and Camille get on some lives or do whatever to kind of capitalize on yeah. your 15 minutes. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I, even know. before that, I think they were shutting us out, though. I think before I, that, okay. I, I think I think even before they heard me say anything, they because they had an interview set up uh, beginning of December, and then they next thing you know, Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, they I heard they didn't say anything. I said, hey, we don't interview or not. And they said, no, we we're gonna reschedule or something, but they never did. They never gone that. Next thing I know, I see other castmates getting interviews. I'm like, All right. you know what I mean? So I think honestly, I felt like because we were portrayed a certain way, I think they didn't want us to talk, especially before the reunion. Because and I that's when I was so adamant, like, okay, I gotta say something. I think I almost was gonna have you talk then or go meet right. up with you. When you was in town, I, yeah, uh, I was gonna almost get it with you. Yeah, I was like, because like, I need I, to, I think I need to say something before the reunion because I think they're trying to portray a certain thing before the reunion. And I think once the reunion is over, people are gonna move on to the next. So they're not gonna care anymore. And so I was like, I gotta say something before this reunion so I can at least people are still gonna go off the show and say, Oh, you're portrayed this way, and they're gonna go off of that. But if I can at least speak and say a few things and then somebody else see what I say and then go watch the reunion, they can be like, oh, I see what you're talking about now. I see how they be tried to create a certain narrative with y'all. I, I get it now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, See, this is the fucked up thing. Mm-hmm. So, and excuse my French. Like, uh-huh. But now, if, if somebody was... No, it's not French, actually. I think it's Dutch or something like that. But I digress. <laughs> but, so, like, if somebody is just constantly slandering a brand name, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, they're going to take it. Court, they're gonna sue you. How dare you slander our name and our mm-hmm. brand and you make us look bad and everything and da 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 really said no. But it's okay for them to exactly make you look a certain way though. And right. it and, and God forbid you say, Oh wait, no, that's out of context. Yeah. God forbid you say, No, wait, it's more to the story. So if you really want to judge me, look at the whole picture and not just this little piece of the corner. Right. And it's like, oh, now we're gonna you know, we got to disassociate ourselves from you because you, how dare you stand up for yourself? Basically. But that's the same thing. And I mean, again, like, I don't know these niggas from Adam, but I do recall a certain celebrity when they were overseas and they were shopping for a purse or whatever. And then the person kept coming back up to them, my bed, water. Uh, They kept coming up to them asking, "Uh, ma'am, can you afford these purses? Can you afford these purses? And then it's like, oh, you don't know who I am? Mm. And then she ended up buying her. So, when you get slandered, oh, you going to buy the whole <laughs> shebang out. Yeah. How dare you because of who I am? Mm-hmm. But somebody who yeah, I'm just the, I'm have just no the, power. Yeah, I ain't got no power. You know, these, these other people, you ain't got no power. I'm just a little schmuck. <laughs> just a little, I'm just a little. And, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we would be talking amongst ourselves, you know, like like my homeboys, you know, like we'd be sitting up talking about it because they watch a lot of podcasts. Uh, shout out to, uh, you ain't met him yet, but he's a fellow Cowboy fan. Shout out to my guy Stefan and you know, uh, my, my cousin D, but we would be talking because they would be watching. It. Yeah. And so like you know, and, and they would be going in like, no, nah, you know, I'm telling you, Shay, I ain't like this, I ain't like that. But like, so again, it's a narrative that's played based off of the fact that they're watching what's being shown. Right. And so now right. my reaction is based off what you're showing me. And so exactly. here you are saying, okay, because to your point, you know, like how he, you say he can kind of control it and flip it okay but what if he's typecast is this yeah that's square, the other part too you Which, know what i'm saying like what the, if he's that, typecast that, like that, oh okay you can only play this square southern bread right we sell a bit pushover yeah. guy yeah you know who has no backbone who can't yeah. stand up for himself yeah i mean like 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 look look at uh what jaleel white mm-hmm. like I, like jaleel white had acted in a bunch of stuff before he played Urkel. Mm-hmm. But he played Urkel so well mm-hmm. that like he could not get anything else. Like now, when you see him in something else, 
your first thought is, uh -oh. oh, this Urkel. Where's the Urkel? Not like <laughs> Tom Hanks. Like like Tom Hanks and played somebody daddy. He didn't play dressed in drag. <laughs> he didn't been a little kid acting like a grown man. Like he can mm -hmm. be a, he's a chameleon. Mm -hmm. And so he's a real actor. But it's like y'all are portraying me in such a way that like now, if he does get cast in the movie, or like what do you think he's gonna be? He's not gonna be a bouncer. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna be a security guard. He's gonna be the square friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I to, just like for me, like maybe Vic, did you watch some of the show? Did what they was in like for me? This is just me. I don't think you were portrayed back. I think most of the stuff that you went into, you was taking up for your lady. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For the mm -hmm. most part, because you, like I said, you can say, okay, he was a pushover, or other people like, no, he's just so sweet. It really mm -hmm. depends. Yeah, it's like you're a nice gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's... you know him though. Yeah. So you're looking at it from the lens of like. I know what he's doing when he does right. this. Yeah, like it's like said, for instance, but I took I, I took those off too. That's why I was asking Vic though. Like, how did you think Cornelius was portrayed? Just like you said. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think it was like. Well, like I'll give you an example. So my cousin texted me about two weeks ago and said, "Hey, uh, this girl, this girl, e uh, texted me whatever and said you were the weakest link on the show. What should I tell her?" I'm like, what the heck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so this is what I get randomly. Right. You know what I'm saying? From family members and yeah, stuff like right. that. Whatever. It's subjective. Like, yeah. I, and yeah. so I told us to do this a TV show. Like, I, and that's, and that's, and that's, and it's so funny. I, um, and I, I guess I can go into it now. So what I ended up doing was, so the, the reunion was so crazy that, and I knew they was playing a certain thing even with the reunion because I feel like the whole first part was about me and Camille. Um, and they hold that whole, did she say this? Did she say that? The whole stuff was going on. Um, um, I I posted some some unseen footage, right? So so on the last day when we filmed, when me and Camille did our last scene at the table, when we was basically she was sending me home and she was you know uh, self eliminating, mm -hmm. I had um, recorded. So she was talking to an empty chair by herself because she had to like redo some stuff. And um, well, the thing was they had two cameras. They had a camera on me and that camera on her. They had to go back and post and edit this thing up, but they wanted to get the water in the background. So, you know, to make it not look at the bootleg, they didn't want to have a camera. You can't see the camera. Like, you ain't trying to be like, no, you know, bootleg type production. Yeah. So, they can't see, one camera can't see the other camera. So, they wanted to take one camera out and just have one camera just on her. Um, I wasn't in that scene. So, I'm just like, you know, okay, I know this is my last day. I'm recording everything. You know what I mean? So, I'm recording. And, um, on the back end of it, I started back looking at some of the footage I had recorded. And I was like, you know what? This shows that it's edited. This shows that it's the edited show because the producers are talking to her, giving her the lines I just said, and now she's got to reset again, like we're acting, and which is what we had to do with certain things. Like we had certain things where we were real in the moment, but then we had to go either go back and say it again, or we had to like come back and oh no, give me that again. You didn't you didn't say that right, said it, you know, and you have, you, have, you have to do certain things again just to kind of give him some good clean footage to show on TV. And so I recorded it, and so what I ended up doing was when everything was going on, whatever, I posted to my stories that that same footage and I put it in my caption. This shows this is edited show because she's talking to empty chair. This is how I'm so easily edited out because they can go back and post and change that thing up. You know what I'm saying? And then show, show her and then show me and all that. And so um, I posted it. <laughs> it wasn't we, within an hour. I get a call from the network. The, yeah, lighthearted. Like if you see at the end of, um, when you see the shows going off, you see own. Um, you see Will Pack Productions, and then you see Lighthearted. People don't catch this stuff. Like you see those in those those shows is over. Right. That's the people you sit and watch the credits. You that's that's the people who make the company, show, right? right? Lighthearted make the show. They sell it to Will Packer and own the show. Hmm. So it's got this black mirage, but Lighthearted is all white folks. <laughs> you know what I mean? They run the show. This is a black show. They run the show, and so. Um, um, so I, I posted it. I get a call from a, a, a finance guy. Well, I can't reach finance or he's a, a legal guy or whatever. I was like, hey, I, I got a call on Saturday. She posted some 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 unseen footage that you got you got to take this down. I'm like, why? What if I don't? Yeah, I was like, I was like, why? Why, why I got to take it down? Because you're showing behind the scenes footage. You're showing key uh, producers. Uh, you're blurring the you're blurring the lines. Is what he said. You're blurring the lines between what's real and fake. You got me gonna make people choose. You know what I'm saying, and I'm like, yeah, it is. To sue you or anything? He basically, he was like, I was like, I was like, this is, it's not real because you edit me right. out. You don't, if you don't take this down. We're gonna bend you. No, he he told me he said he said hey, he said you gotta take this down. You don't hear a call from lawyers, dude. That's what I was talking to my homeboy about. You don't hear a call from lawyers, do you? You know what I mean? And uh, I was like, what well, y'all portraying me a certain way? He said, well, this is a TV show. People should know this is fake. People don't know this is fake. People think this is actually how it happened. This is actually real. And y'all 
are making it like it's real. So, you know what I mean? So I got to blur the lines. And so funny, I think I posted it within an hour. Somebody actually did screenshot it and put it on a YouTube. It was on somebody's YouTube page. It's, it's a little bit out there. But uh, it shows that it's edited to show a little bit. But I had to. I took it down within within an hour. I, was, right. I argued with him for a little bit to get my point across. Right. <laughs> and I went and took it down. He's like, he just said, you're gonna have more problems for yourself if you don't take this down. And I'm like, all right, forget it, whatever. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like, people that I know and that I talk to, you know what I'm saying? Because um, even you know our friend from Texas, who, like we talking about it, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, but but again, the portrayal was because they don't know him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so now, keep in mind, I know him better than a lot of the people who are watching the show, but I don't know him like you know him. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I don't know him like, you know, his mom and dad and brother know him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, so even with me watching certain stuff, but it's just me knowing, I already know how this stuff goes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I told you, like, like when I was trying to be on making the band, like, I already know how this stuff goes. Right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, so I knew that, but like when I'm talking to people who are watching it, and they like, man, you know, what's up with your boy? <laughs> oh, you got talking about your boy? That's the dude uh, y'all had on the man. Uh, when oh, you remember episode, that, right? You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> that's like, Damn. Yeah, that's nah, like, yeah. I mean, so I'm just right. like, right. That, that was, and I'm like, no, nah, trust me. Oh man, they, they ain't doing that much editing, bro. They ain't doing that much editing. Yeah, that's and what I'm they like, say. No, really, nigga, they editing. No, they are, no. they are. They, they didn't know that much. That's what everybody said. In the world, man, I couldn't be me. One place when Courtney was trying to, you uh -huh. know, and take it there, uh -huh. and they were trying to portray like you wasn't going at all. Oh, I could okay. see that. Right. In yeah. That right. And love me. In other instances, I feel like you held your own. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Me too. Now, the only thing I would say is just, just me looking at reality shows now. Like I think it's. <laughs> Like I said, just in general, I think it's mostly understood that what you see on the camera is really not them. Not all them. Like, I mean, there's some, there's some, now I'll give it to you. There's, ago, there's some stuff. You got common sense. <laughs> I, everybody don't, everybody, I mean, the way my stuff was blowing up afterward, people, pe people think this stuff is real. They think everything happens fluently how it happens. Right, right. When right, you got right. two different cameras, <laughs> you know what I mean? And what? then it doesn't help when you have cast, certain castmates to go along with it too. And they say what producers tell them to say. And they especially, uh, you know, one instance, Aisha, for instance, like I'm blow up. She's getting coached, you know what I'm saying, to say certain things about. Because we're like, honestly, me and Camille was like, we we pretty got necked and pretty 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 pretty, pretty tough early on. So um, they were trying to get Sydney, the new girl, to kind of break us up a little bit, mm -hmm. but it didn't work. But they tried to get a girl with the crinkly. The the new the one they brought in as like the curveball like this is going to throw somebody into the yeah, to, yeah. To, to to the situation Life uh, and, yeah uh, because the reason why I know this is because <laughs> but we were we we were in the scene and they saw Camille was upset this is why the Camille and we tell me country brunch and all that we were downstairs they tried to get her to come grab me to say oh go grab Cornelius and I already talked to Kelly who's the guy that's white guy that's over all of us. Um, I told him I, you know, she was upset about whatever, whatever. Right after that, next thing I see, she coming up. Hey, just tell me to come and grab you. I was like, they trying to just right. go on somewhere. They, I am not, I'm not, I'm not even taking the bait. Right. You know what I mean? And then even the next day, they put me on a double date with uh, it was me, Camille, uh, 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 got the girl name now, Sydney and Dante. So it was a double date, and everything after that was double dates. Everything because they, they were trying to make Camille jealous. Right. So everything and the committee had to call them to say, "Stop putting me on double dates, with Cornelius. I know what y'all trying to do. You know, y'all trying to get me up real. I, I got, y'all got me one time. Right. Y'all trying to see keep pushing, we pushing Camille's button to get some, get some type of audio, yeah. get some, get some, you know, yeah, get some they, kind they of got drama. They got it. They, they did. They got it. <laughs> and then there was another scene too where uh, we kind of, I ain't gonna, I was kind of acting in private in this scene. Uh, so on my ex's date, um, when we were down, so we had to redo it again. So we, so the scene where. She's walking in the house and I'm greeting her. And she, I think, I don't know if you probably caught her. She said, whose shoes are those? Uh, you, yeah, when she was being your ex or something? Yeah, when she first walked to the house. Okay. We filmed okay. that after everything was over. We had, we had to act like she was going out and coming back in again. Okay. And um, she said, whose shoes? Now, she did say that, but they didn't catch it on camera. So we had to, we had to redo it again for camera. Mm -hmm. And then um, when she left out, she left out normally at first and then... They was like, uh-uh, no, that's not enough. And the producer's like, come back, come back, do that again. And uh, we need more than that, come here. We need more than that. She was like, she looked at me and I was like, I, I improv with you. And then just when she said, 
uh, when is she leaving? And that's when people say, ah, oh, that's the Camille right. we know. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the Camille we know. So yeah. that's the TV part that people, but people, she got a lot of help for that though. So mm -hmm. with, from your experience, like basically what they have, what they're able to do with you, you know what I'm saying? As far as your name, image, and likeness, and edit, and stuff like mm -hmm. that, it's not worth the benefit that you would get. Because like I said, you're a prospective model, mm -hmm. actor, you know, everything else that could potentially benefit from being on screen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So He's also a potential husband and father now <laughs> because yeah. of this. So I'm just saying, they end up being married for 40 years. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a win. It's, it, it, it could be. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it's still... That story still being told, right? You know what I mean, as far as that part of it. But I don't know. I, it's, it's some days where I'll be like, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I still, because that was a time period, like I said, I was going to quit. I don't know. I think I mentioned that before already. I, I was um, after that, actually, after that food party situation, because I saw how they were feeding into the drama of it. And I saw how they were producing, how they were laughing and all that. And I was like, you know what? Y'all don't even care about us. Like, y'all just different to TV. And y'all make it, they make it like so much when you first go into it. Like, oh, we gotta like really find you somebody. Like, we, what you like? Who you, who you kind of, how many you like? You know, they really trying to seem like they really, but then when you get into it, like, no, we trying to make a TV show. Like, come on, you know what I mean? And so I was, I told my dad, I told, actually, I told my mom first, I said, mom, I'm finna quit and whatever. And uh, she was like, uh oh, you know, mom, she was like, oh, you want my baby on TV? Nah, you, you, you stay all the way to the mom, end. Dog, <laughs> boy, like, dog, she, she said, nah, mom. She was posting on the job. And this is my baby. Yeah. He is. I was like, on this nah, TV mama. show. I said, nah, mom, I'm about to quit. I'm about to quit, mom. And uh, and uh, she was like, nah, don't quit. And it's so funny. Right after I told her I was about to quit, uh, my daddy called me. You know, daddy called. <laughs> he said, boy, would you, you heard you about to quit. I said, yeah, dad, I can't do this. Nah, nah, you start something, you finish it. I was like, daddy, this is crazy. Like, these people are crazy. You know, he's, nah, you start something, you finish it. So when he said start something, you finish it. I was like, all right, all right, I ain't gonna just quit. I right, figured, all right, I go ahead and go, go where they need to go. I go ahead and, and go finish it out. But uh, I think, like I said, overall, I'm, 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 I'm. Sometimes, some days I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm glad I finished it out. And some days I'm like, dang, why did I? I can't say why I didn't do it because I was excited about it. I think I'm always thinking about the time where like, maybe I should have just quit when I wanted to quit. Maybe I could have controlled the narrative a little bit if I just left. They'd be like, oh, why he leave? And then been a little bit more. I could have controlled that a little bit more, but. I was thinking about from that aspect. You always kind of like have that thing in the back of your head, like what shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Uh, maybe I shoulda did this, maybe I shoulda did that. And I'll be honest with you, even coming off of the show now, I've had to go through therapy to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? Like I've actually been seeking therapy the last probably three or four weeks, uh, last month or so, um, because of just how you get jacked up, how it's so many people in your lives now. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like you can't have a normal relationship. Everybody's trying to figure out what you're doing. You in love? What's, what, you know what's going on with y'all now? Y'all still together? Y'all not together? You know what I mean? And then people look at her a certain type of way, and they look at me a certain type of way. It's like, oh, you a good guy? You need a better woman than that. I can be a better, you know, because they try to get their bid in. I can be a better woman than she is, you know. And so you have that constant thing. So you like you have an excuse if you leave her, but then if you stay with her, it's like, oh, she 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 possessed you into a relationship or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's just you just have that thing. It's and marriage and relationship is already hard without having right. all these people in your lives and stuff so that was my next question mm -hmm. to see how that being on a reality show basically you having a relationship starting from that mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying how is that dynamic working out um like i said she's she's definitely going through her own personal counseling i think she kind of going back and forth but she did counseling and then I'm doing mines now. And uh, it's been definitely constant talks of, of, of uh, we kind of pulled away from a lot of the other castmates in a way too, because in a sense, once we got done filming, actually filming and actually shown on TV, uh, I think a lot of people, you don't know what people's motives are. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially women, for, for, for instance, like, you don't, you know, you hang out with a woman or whatever, they may be trying to break you up. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what, you don't know what, people's intentions are when they're trying to do certain things and how they but move. But you can peep game, Carl. Yeah, you can peep game. Yeah, yeah, you can. Oh, man, he ain't been out of TSU for a minute, though. So, I like, say, yeah. It just be something. He ain't been around y'all for a minute, man. Yeah, it's been a minute. Don't act like I ain't seen you uh, put the pinky up when you sip. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, oh, that man put the whole pinky up <laughs> when he did it. But, but hey, he ain't been around y'all, JB. Like, it ain't like so. Because you know, cause cause this, Kansas is, and, this is just me. Because I know me and Con, we, we've been close since we've been like six and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, but we mm -hmm. got different personalities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I'm looking like, man, like, y'all ain't going to. 
you know, I'll peep game. If you try to break me up, I may play into it. Mm -hmm. Just to be like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna see how far you gonna go because mm -hmm. you ain't gonna mess me up. You're right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. But for you, it may be more stronger, and it may be something like you said. You gotta go through therapy and mm -hmm. do all this. Mm -hmm. Whatever you gotta do, do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, bro, don't let these folks, these trolls on the internet, get to you in your head, bro. Like, yeah. that ain't stay like it. out the comments. Uh, that's man. hard to do. Yeah, like, that's not, hard to do. It's not. Tell them. I ain't gonna hold you. you. Hey, he told me. I do that's it, hard to I do. I don't. I don't respond. I got you. because I realized that when I woke up this morning, my name was Roche. But, but motherfucking Ragland. I, I, I got to respond to them. They don't know me. Well, let me nine times out of ten, come. If I really choose to go there with somebody, when mm -hmm. I put my response, my response is gonna be like. Well, it's like it's like when you call a SWAT team. Right, three 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 three. It's on a different exactly. it's on a I'm different level gonna... though. So this is the thing though. So I didn't know that this many bloggers was following the show. So you got so as soon as you go on YouTube, you follow one or two bloggers, you follow the show. There's bloggers wearing you out on YouTube constantly. You know what I'm saying? I see one. Um and so you got multiple bloggers going in on you. Then you got a whole hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you type in hashtag, you type in hashtag ready love space Cornelius. All this stuff comes up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I ain't gonna lie. Initially, I was cool. Like the first maybe three or four weeks, I, was, I think I'll actually, I'll do the kicks and giggles. I'll go with my hashtag, right. see all the crazy comments, see the comments about oh, he gay or he this, or you see all these different comments. It's like, oh, I'm getting that whatever. I, I ain't tripping. But then I think it just started getting to me a little bit. So I started seeing the weak comments. I think that for some reason got to me a little bit, especially when we started hearing bloggers saying, oh, why you just do this? Why you didn't do this? So it's like, now you got that mental thing going on, like, dang, like, am I really like that? Yeah, am I really that's like, you know? Ask you. So, and so, at first it was giggles, but then mm -hmm. when the weak, the weak thing was your trigger. I think, I think, well, initially the gay thing was a little bit initially, but I had been getting that forever, so it's like, ah, oh, whatever, that, I'm, you know, hey, hey, I been, whatever. All right, you, you play, you play football mm -hmm. in high school, correct? Mm -hmm. So anybody who plays beyond like Pop Warner. Mm -hmm. When you play it like in a, in a high school level, you played at a high high school level. Mm -hmm. Like you got to have a certain um, you got some clock. Mm -hmm. You got to have you cannot be weak playing football. I don't give that's true. You cannot football is not for the faint of heart. Right. You constantly hitting somebody, getting hit, getting your bell rung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, so like you know that. Right. Like, did you ever watch uh, Game of Thrones? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you remember on one of the seasons. Uh, I believe he was talking to dude was talking to Jon Snow, and he said, "You got to use your shame as your armor." Oh yeah, that's when he was. You, you remember being, him, him, him he being said, a, use him. your shame as your armor because if you take it on him being a, a, now, a child, they, they can't that. do anything to you. And I don't right. know if y'all remember, it's like eight matter rat. Right, eight yep. matter. Yep. Oh eight yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn, so now that I yeah. tell you everything that you're going to say about me, now right. what? Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what? And, and yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, but mm -hmm. if, if you try to defend yourself, yeah, yeah, then you're you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win. And I, and I figured that you're out. Winning, you're yeah. losing because somebody else is gonna come with something else. That you yeah, 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 yeah. But now true. show yourself doing some hashtag weak nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's funny. Show that. yourself when your date. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's like, funny. Hey, say that. You know what I'm saying? Gay niggas get bad for me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, now what? For real? You know what now, now, did you see the joke we did? Now, we did do that. We did do something like that. Just see the joke we did, like a little quick reel uh, of Camille. her. Yeah, me and Camille did it. Oh, you were tired of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was me. That was what I was doing in that scene. Like, it was like, oh, this would be funny. I mean, this would be, like, this, this be, this be, be poking fun. <laughs> you know, yeah, this would be poking like, fun. Bruh. Yeah, this would be fun like, way to poke fun at it. Like I'm tired of it. She's like, he ain't lying. Oh, he forced me to a relationship. Like I said, like anybody. <laughs> I troll. Nobody responds to me. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like, no, no, no. Like, that's true. Even fun no more. It's not even fun. Yeah, I know. I got you. To, to his point, like I won't know what comment. It was back in the day. Not mm -hmm. back in the day. Maybe a couple years ago. They were talking about the Trump. Was, oh, you mm -hmm. Trump, whatever. Like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da 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 da. I put a gif of Trump talking, just like okay. You know what I'm saying? Like they ain't say nothing else after that. Because what else are you gonna say? Yeah, I'm not gonna defend myself. Be like, oh, well, duh, 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 duh. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's gonna yeah, get yeah. me You only do so many interviews, right, right, right. And, and that's how I was. Posted some one time, and it's been a couple of years ago. Somebody was like, they were kind of going back and forth because he was really. Oh, I think so, I was it Rico. So I, 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 I remember stuff. And so it, it's like now, like I said, I stay out the comments, uh -huh. but I'm reading it, and I know where he's coming from. And this person ain't listening because, like I told you, you got common sense. They would come back and tell you something to me about yeah, it. It's like, sense. most people, it's like, get your point, your point at Trump. So I was like, what? what? What's going on? What's happening? You know, so, yeah, I remember most that. people's common sense is two pennies. Your common sense is 2785. 
So you can't. You're trying to compare twenty seven dollars and eighty five cent with two pennies. Right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? But I'm 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 reading it and I'm getting pissed off now because I see this nigga ain't listening to they're nothing not, that you're here. saying. Yeah. And so I don't know if you remember, like I responded back, yeah. and like I said, it, it like I was driving, I parked. Cause you know I'm in light, so I'm looking. I parked. I had to pull over, so I'm just sitting over there. But so when you see my response, wow, <laughs> dude did not respond no more. But see, mm-hmm. most of the time we don't we don't have time to do that. Yeah. And, and then even after I did that, mm-hmm. I was so emotionally like, and we didn't even talk about it until later. But mm-hmm. I was so emotionally drained from that mm-hmm. because I let somebody else. Cause yeah, regardless. Like we we have days where like man this nigga know my dirtiest secrets mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. but then it's sometimes I know I probably get on his nerves mm-hmm. it's sometimes he get on my nerves and we'll be talking about it a week later and be like oh you was mad at me when I did that again <laughs> he'll be like man you know you, forgot, you know man we like your father you know the man, long text about that the right. long text I'm basically yeah and I'd be like and he know because I don't respond oh you be saying a long text and he, know, and he know I'd be mad like he <laughs> know when he sent him because I'm at work so like I stop. And I see this, this nigga that sent me a whole paragraph. Mm-hmm. I'm in the rain, I'm getting chased by racist dogs, and I'm like, you sent me this bush. Yeah, man. No, that's another conversation. Postman, man. postman. Like, but yeah, that's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Said, racist, like, that dog it, be racist. It, 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 <laughs> that's my guy. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And and then on, on and crowd can attest to this, it's some times where people have done or said some stuff that related to me, and I didn't know, mm-hmm. but... He riding for me like, hey man, y'all y'all need to uh y'all need to do right by Shay. Like I, right. I think y'all need to talk like if, if you ain't yeah. gonna talk to Shay about it, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Right, right, right. So at the end of the day, regardless of how up and down we get, I know where his heart is. Right, right, right. So to so the same token, and I told him I can't get invested like that because mm-hmm. I know his heart, and now I'm so I mm-hmm. might mess up your package. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm sitting up here reading the comment and I'm mad because I'm like, yeah. wait, wait, wait till I can get you. Yeah, I had a lot of I had a lot of people like that for me too. Like they was like, I hate the way these they ain't, putting certain stuff out here. It's just, and, yeah. and just like you know how uh, Mo King shout out Mo Kingston Bruce Lee, yeah. but I don't respond a lot of times when he be put because it's the same thing. People be arguing with him, right. and like that's like that's like my little brother. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you come for him. <laughs> Right. Yeah, um, yeah, I got it. And that same thing with Camille too. Like yeah. she had a lot of people defend her in the comments too. A lot of people that she, exactly. you know, she's a teacher. She had a lot of past right. students. She went to Howard, so she got that alum. Like she went to school with like Lance Gross and all these folks. So, oh, so, so yeah. So she had a lot of people that she, you know, on her Howard side was defending her. So, and that's what actually helped me to see her in a different light too, because I didn't get caught up in the whole hoopla of how they portrayed her. Because I saw the real Camille behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? I saw the real person on the phone and as we talking and the real person that's giving, you know, that's good, that has a good heart. Um, and how she, her friends went to bat for her. I said, oh, man, if your friends go to bat for you like that, I, you know what I mean? Tells me a lot about your character. So, come yeah. see, too. You remember this dude here, man. I've been, see, you, Camille was like my best friend growing up in, uh, in the childhood, going back in Twim. Like, remember when she hey, peed on the floor in uh, fifth grade? <laughs> Oh no, that was an accident What's though. It? it don't matter. Who's that Coleman? It's always that Coleman. 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 Elementary. I'm saying but twin mine. Twin mine. That was street. Twin. No, I know, but that's twin lakes. Uh, off of twin it's like right around the corner. Oh, from from Raleigh, 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 Raleigh. Raleigh. Like around the corner. Not, from okay, no, no, I'm thinking. No, I'm saying, but it's not too far from Raleigh Trace though. No, no, no. No, because I'm saying when y'all was over there, like we had just moved over. Okay, it's not too far. Twin like goes down to battlefield. Right. Yeah. But Battlefield. Yeah. 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 No, I stayed on Walsingham. Okay. So, but, but, but saying, that's it, right. But people were talking about, you know, oh, him, they did talk about me and bad. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But I always roll with him. People like, no, you did. I was like, this my nigga. He said, you a PVP in the band. He said, my dude. Like, it wasn't no <laughs> that's funny. What happened. Yeah. People were talking about him when we were going to yeah, yeah. DC. People talking yeah, about yeah. him. Oh, spam. yeah. Do stuff like that. But I was like, this. It's my dude. They show us. See, that's not. That's why I'm kind of used to it. Because <laughs> the elementary and a little bit in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm kind. That's why I was kind of used to it. That's why I said that I was getting. I, I got a few gay comments when I was in high school and stuff. Yeah. You know, because me and Derek was hanging out pretty tough. Yeah. So yeah, I just get comments. That's what I'm saying. That certain comments didn't get to me. I think it was when the week. So it was certain ones. It was like, all right, after a while, maybe after weeks, <laughs> weeks of seeing comments. Like, all right, now it's not getting to me now. Right. But yeah, man, don't don't let those no folks mm-hmm. get you, bro. But yeah, yeah. it's you. You know what I'm saying? You went through that process for a reason. I, actually, I'm still wanting to meet your lady, Camille. So <laughs> whenever, you know what I'm saying, you come to the M or, you know, maybe I'll be up in D.C. or something. Maybe we yeah. can uh, 
meet up for for lunch or something like that. Hey, so hey, I can on, look you in your eyes. You know, it's different. <laughs> I don't, don't want to talk to nobody on the phone. That's the same thing my cousin yeah, said. I want to meet her. I want to look. In, <laughs> I want to look in your eyes and just have a conversation with you mm-hmm. and uh, kind of see what's up. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, bro, I want you to be good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know, therapy, if that's for you, mm-hmm. you know, do what you got to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But don't let these trolls and stuff, but that's, yeah. that's what they want. They want, they want a reaction from Yeah, you. yeah. And I've been recovering. I think once the show ended, um, I think the saving grace was the fact they brought another season right after our, so right after our part two of our reunion, they had another season like that next Friday. So I had to deal with stuff for maybe another week or two and then. It kind of just dropped off a little bit. So I don't get as many comments. I might get a few comments. I may see a comment every now, every blue moon here and there, but I don't really see stuff like that. Now, another crazy thing is just because they're trying to lock you out or try to uh, freeze you out a little bit, mm-hmm. I don't think it's a good coincidence that they put another dude named Cornelius <laughs> I don't know. On, the, on this season coming up. Because I was I like, know. as soon as I heard this dude named Cornelius, I'm like, Wait, this dude. He trying. was gone pretty quick, though. I he think. was gone pretty quick. Yeah. But then now you're not the only. Cornelius, Cornelius that's from ready to love. That's now they got this other Cornelius yeah. from ready to love. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that part. Man, I don't think it's coincidental. We talked about this off camera. Yep. This stuff is not coincidental. Nope. When mm-hmm. people start making certain moves. Yep. And it's like, so now when it's hashtag Cornelius, it's yep. like, oh, it's not. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it gets confused. Cause that's why I looked at. I was like, yeah, I, was, I told Reggie, I was like, I said they did this just on purpose. Cause I'm like, mm. cause y'all going on, you know, they probably get talking about this. Oh, did it? Mm. They like, oh, they, oh, we gonna put another Cornelius on. So <laughs> your name will not be the only name of Cornelius mm-hmm. when you look up a Google yeah. ready to love Cornelius. But yeah. see, you know what? The, so like, this is the messed up part for him, and this is why we're in the best place right now. Like, Crown is in the best place right now. Like. Right now, they don't have anything that they can take from us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So right. We're free to speak freely. Yeah, y'all can speak freely. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? They don't what happens y'all. Is, so, like, for him, he got something. You know what I'm saying? Bas- basically, they gave him, uh, and I heard of the late great Patrice O'Neill say this, they gave him some gold handcuffs. Right? Mm-hmm. So, it's gold. You want to keep it, but it's handcuffs to that. Mm-hmm. But then, they can threaten to take that away from you. Mm-hmm. So, now, you're doing everything you can to keep it even though, you know what I'm saying, on the one hand, it's bad because you're trapped. You know what I'm saying? On the other hand, it's gold, but they threatening to take it away from you. Mm-hmm. And if they take it away from you, now he's going to spend the rest of his career trying to get that back. Mm-hmm. Even though it was bondage, even though it was because it's gold. Mm-hmm. Right now, we ain't, they ain't got nothing to take from us. Right. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we can speak freely. We can say what we want. Yeah. But the worst thing that can happen is would be a good thing right. man we we'd love to walk away from the job we monetize the algorithm up mm-hmm. man we might you know what i'm saying hey yeah. we ain't got to worry about putting the kids through college, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah they got they got, we got out there. About putting the kids yeah. through college that's all, like that that's all, these, that's all these dating shows they, they 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 make good money um and that's all they do the guy yeah. that the guy i was talking about he's in london he does a lot of, that's all he does he talks about married at first sight talks about ready to love talks about put a ring on it and all, that's all and all the dating shows and right. he makes good money just interviewing these people but but mm-hmm. if they but if they give us something then mm-hmm. now oh you know what jb you know your stance on this it's a and you know why strong. because mm-hmm. they gave you something now right so now it's like and if you keep that stance we're gonna take away yeah your father okay, not gonna sponsor we're gonna you. take away this <laughs> algorithm you got you might have to go back and get a get a nine to five job to pay for that and you do you know jb you know you got these right. kids you got to put through college mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you got a wife you got a house that's what I think. That's what I think happened to Steve Harvey too. I think he doesn't yeah. put a certain stance so hard because he got a lot of jobs now. He got a lot they of people that gave support. him something. Yeah, they got a lot of people that supporting him now. Because I think even when uh, Ellen, like Ellen, he works with Ellen a lot with a lot of different yeah. projects. Oh, like he, take a stand, he don't talk it, about the game. He don't talk about none of that stuff. Like the <laughs> yeah, yeah they gave too. him something. Yeah, and so that's why, like, dude, he's supposed to host apologizing for jokes he made yep. ten years. Yeah, he's supposed to host the Oscars. Already the Oscars, for. yeah, it means the Oscars are one. He's supposed to host, and they took it away from him. Like that's how stupid it is. Like he just quit. Actually, I think he just. Like, no, he because because he he basically it got to a point where it's like I already apologized for this. Now yeah. I'm not going to keep apologizing. I'm not going to go be like like you said. You're going to see somebody. I'm not going to keep going to see all these people. Yeah, and I apologize for this ten years ago. Yeah, but since you brought it back up, I apologize again. Mm-hmm. But now you want me every single time that I do an interview, I got to apologize again. Mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. just like if we got into a fight ten years ago, and I might start it mm-hmm. ten years ago. I came back. And was like, hey man, you know what? I was wrong. I should have mm-hmm. did that. 
But every time somebody talked to me, yeah, right, that's tough. Man, why you pick on Cornelius? That's tough. That's you know just what I'm saying? That's, that's like we yeah. squashed that ten years ago. Right. That's just like how the girls on the show, like you know, Zadi, for instance, when she had the whole situation with Dante. Mm -hmm. Even though we filmed that between July and August, we was done filming in August. They're showing that now. Now she's apologizing for that in January. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, right. No, it's never January. Squashed. Yeah, they already squashed it, but now she's got to go on a campaign where she and I got it, and everybody around her got to like apologize. They want to meet apologize. I'm like, dude, she already apologized. Why not apologize for other folks? So it's, so it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely like that. You yeah, have fun. Now you go on it, apology, bro. apology tour. <laughs> Everything you did, have fun with it because I actually mm -hmm. like that little skit y'all did with you was tied up. Yeah, yeah, that was something we spoke in front of. Rags point, like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? People calling you this, like they could nobody say nothing to that. You, you, you ain't got to get like I ain't like I said, bro. I got my own wife, but y your lady is nice. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? She's a nice looking young lady. Look at me. <laughs> She's a nice, nice looking, looking uh, young lady. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can't say that I got that. You yeah, know what I'm saying okay. flaunt that. Yeah, and be like, okay, I'm gay. Okay, everybody, everybody wanted it too. <laughs> when she walked in the house, everybody was, right. everybody was <laughs> right, 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 right. So you know, use that to your advantage, man, mm -hmm. and uh, don't let these fools. You know what I'm saying? Hit you. You know, I got your back, but then you know, also I'm gonna keep it one thousand while I'm with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I don't think you know this, I, you yeah, know, you I, I let you me. know. Yeah, I let you know. You, you know what I'm Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So. uh yeah, man, we can talk all night. You know, what I'm saying? You know how we he didn't ran out of Cosmo is really what it is. <laughs> he, he, he didn't ran out, he didn't ran out of his exclusive James Bond drink. <laughs> My pink lemonade over there <laughs> doing that, but uh, but yeah, call man. Um, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate you coming through, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Appreciate glad you I'll, coming I'll through. Right yeah. Um, you know, always welcome to man, y'all. Do do us a favor, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's gonna be in the description, but man, y'all follow him. You know what I'm saying? Cornelius Bryant, support him if y'all see him in something. You know what I'm saying? Support his work because he works hard in his craft. He's been doing so. Uh, I know for as long as I've known him. You know, and JB's known him longer than I have. But man, y'all support everybody we have on here. Everybody we shout out, man. Y'all go follow these people, add these pages, like them. Cause I promise you, they got something that will benefit you. Yeah, you follow me on Instagram. At now, which one you, you got? Like two of. Them. Yeah, I got two of. Them. So my one that I usually use for the show and everything is Cornelius Bryant underscore Dream Chaser. Okay. Uh, I put my name in once the show started. Right. So, uh, yeah, but Cornelius Bryant underscore Dream Chaser. You uh, you got the name. projects gonna be out in the next few months. Um, so the biggest thing I'm working on now is actually record from the show. Okay. Uh, working on so we're trying to do a spinoff from New York undercover. And do a DC on the cover. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah so playing the cops and stuff like that. Yeah, so he created it, produ he's producing it, and he okay. got the, you know he's he's got to bring me along with him as, as one of his co co stars in it, and uh, so we've been actually filming you know some teasers with it, and we must be doing our first episode here another maybe another week or two. We really filming like our first official episode of it, and uh, I'm not sure where he's gonna platform he's gonna put it on yet, but but yeah, so that's. That's when we definitely casting for and trying to get it going now. So that's dope. You're good. I want to be yeah. gas station attendant. <laughs> <laughs> we looking for looking for people. We're looking for actors now. We're looking for some people. That's so that's, hey, we ain't got no Newports, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that just gonna be in DC? It's gonna be filming. We're filming in DC. Yeah, yeah. We filmed, like I said, we filmed some stuff already. Um, and so yeah, so he's he's a creative for real, for real. You no, know, I think when he went on the show, he really was. Betraying, but he's really quiet. He he's really not a the type of person either. Like he's very like like not one of the people like in like the life of the party, but one of the people that's behind the scenes. But as soon as the camera come on, he got you know he all over the place. Yeah. So him and Camille, that's why I'm, I'm cool with him and Camille. <laughs> and they just, and they were honestly the two people who were the biggest people that everybody wanted to see on the show. Like Corey between Corey and then Corey, everybody wanted to see what Camille's gonna do next. So Corey yeah. was a character on that. Yeah, <laughs> or if y'all have a radio show on there. Then cast us as the oh, yeah. radio. Host. Oh yeah. Or oh, yeah. Like I said, uh, like I said right. the gas stations attendants, I'd be like, hey yo, JB, we got any more Newports back there? <laughs> right, hey, right, bro, right. Right, right. Uh, yeah, he definitely like, something. he'd be gas station attendant number two and he never gets off his phone. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He'd be like, hey, we got any more Newport don't worry about it. Hey JB, uh -huh. we got any more Newports back there? Uh -huh. Nah, bro, no Newports. Oh, uh, and, and then we can get a sad card. Yeah, yeah. Because we got speaking lines in the show. Yeah. And that's then true. you know if you get a sad card, you get the insurance. <laughs> As I say, so oh, I I know know my oh, you know, you research it. You know, yeah. think about it. Think about yeah. it. But y'all, until next time, continue with that executive mindset and most definitely keep it presidential. Keep it presidential. <laughs> <laughs>